hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, it's part two of Dutchy Patterns Forklift Build. Well, on last week's show, we got all of the formalities out of the way of introducing the pattern, showing what to expect if you should decide to order one of these, etc., etc. And while it didn't look like we got much done, we did get the base done and the rear axle and got that steering mechanism working really well. So all in all, it was time well spent. And on this week's show, we're going to get into a few pieces that may seem a little difficult and a little out of reach, but I'm going to show you here today how you can follow some simple steps and get successful parts made of your own. So let's head over to the bench and get this show started. Well, the first piece that we want to make today is part 3A, which is the engine. And I have cut a block of poplar here, which is 70 millimeters wide and 71 millimeters long. I almost said inches there. And the first thing I want to do is I want to cut this rabbit that's here. It's a rather large rabbit, but we're going to cut this shoulder first at the table saw. We'll set our blade height to 12 millimeters and very carefully run that piece through at the table saw to get our shoulder here cut. Then using our miter fence and setting our blade at 47 millimeters above the table, we will cut the other cut to be able to remove that piece and complete our rabbit. And there we have our rabbit cut. Now, guys, truth be told, I made this a little longer than what the 71 calls for on the plans. And that was so that I would have room to sand up to our profile there. It calls for a radius of 199. For me, it's easier just to make a template like what I've done here on scrap quarter inch MDF. And I will just mark this out and just like that, I have the radius that I need. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this over to the belt sander. I'm going to sand up to that line and get that radius finished. From there, it's just a simple round over over at the router table um, to get that radius round over all along the top surface. And that would be that piece finished. Now, guys, two things you may have noticed there when routing this profile. Number one is I used a starter pin. Very important to help with control and to prevent kickback from the router. Please don't try to freehand it. Most of these router tables, if not all of them, come with a starter pin. Uh, most guys don't even know what they are or how to use them, but that helps prevent the kickback, as I said. The other thing you'll notice is that I used a hand screw clamp to hold this smaller piece. You don't need a fancy jig, you don't need something, you could even use a quick grip clamp, but use something to hold this block other than your hand. And that way, if you should get a kickback, your fingers are not taking the brunt of the router bit. Um, honest to goodness, those router bits show no mercy. They really do serious damage. So use something to hold your piece. Okay, so now that I'm done preaching, let's move on to this next piece, which will be our engine sides. Now guys, this piece looks difficult and it does have some questionable areas that could be a little problematic. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with a square block measuring 100 by 148 and it is going to be 33 millimeters thick. So let me get two of these blanks cut and then we can get into the actual, uh, well, difficult part, we'll say. So we're going to make these engine sides. We need a right and a left, the same way we did with the rear axle pieces. Make sure you keep your orientation in mind, but there is a lot going on in these pieces. So we're just gonna take it step by step. Don't get intimidated by this. This is not as difficult as what it looks. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to drill the holes. Like I said, as a rule of thumb, we're going to drill holes first. Sometimes we'll deviate from that, but not this time. So we have two holes here, actually. Um, this little one right here, which we can see here, seven millimeters, and we can also see right here. This will only get drilled in the right side. So we are going to mark one of our blanks here with an R for the right side, just so that we can keep it straight. And we will drill this four millimeter deep, uh, seven millimeter diameter hole. 
And there we have that in the right side done. Now, just like we had before, uh, this is showing a seven millimeter diameter hole. Guys, again, there's no listing on the conversion list for a seven millimeter. It jumps straight to eight. But if you're curious, uh, Imperial is a 930 second. So that's about the closest you're going to come. Now, the next hole, you may be looking at this and saying, what hole is he talking about? And I'm talking about this one or this this light recess right here in the back. Not everything has to be done with power tools, guys. So what we're going to do actually is we're going to carefully measure this out. It's a radius of 10 millimeters, which is 20 millimeter diameter. The closest we're gonna come, although it's a little bigger, is a three quarter inch Forstner bit. And that's what I'm going to use, knowing, because I've looked ahead, that there is an actual light piece that goes here. So it will hide the divot that the Forstner bit provides. I'm going to mark the center of this hole and right in the end of each one of our back pieces, carefully measuring, we're going to drill the three quarter inch, in my case, diameter Forstner bit hole to the proper depth, which in this case right here is nine millimeters. Now guys, uh, this is best done with a fence on your drill press, careful measuring, but please keep in mind that we have a left and a right piece and we need to keep their orientation the right way so that everything will work out right. And with those two holes drilled, what we're going to do here is I'm going to square off across the inside surface here and to the edge of our holes, just like this, we'll mark a line and we'll do the same thing up here at the top edge of this circle. And now guys, what we're going to do, we'll do the same thing on this piece and this is going to be hand chiseled. So I'm just going to mark the rest of the hole on the inside surface and we're going to chisel this out. Now you could use, if you had a 10 millimeter radius uh, router bit, you could set up your router fence and do a stopped hole here like this and route in through the side and you would end up with your groove and your stopped hole. But I don't have that size bit. Um, for me, the hand chiseling here is going to be a much easier way to do it. And just like that, those two recesses are cut. Now, I've got some tear out there, and that is my own fault due to a chisel that wasn't as sharp as what it could be. But I know that there's another part that's going to go in here, so I'll be able to clean this up with some sanding, and that other part will glue over top to hide any of the imperfections of the chiseling. So guys, don't be too concerned about how perfect your chiseling job is. As long as you have clean shoulders up here and uh, you have the right shape, you should be just fine. So with that done now, we want to cut this rabbit. You can see it right here as well right here. So we're going to cut the shoulder first, raise our blade to 12 millimeters, and then cut this shoulder. Now, you have two options now. You can raise your blade just under 42 and use the fence and push sticks to cut this second part of your rabbit or you can just keep running multiple passes all the way across with your blade to get this 12 millimeter deep rabbit all the way across on the front end of your piece. Well, I opted for multiple passes across the blade. I just felt it was a much safer operation. I don't like the amount of surface area that I had down here to run this against the fence. The problem with this though, is that it does create some ridges depending on the type of blade that you're using. So some sandpaper on MDF is gonna sort this out just fine. I'm not concerned about it and I still have my fingers intact. So I'm gonna get this all sanded up and cleaned up and uh, we'll go from there. Well, if we look at our drawing, we can see here that there is a routed detail running vertically on the uh, outside of both our right and our left pieces. And we're just going to do that over at the router table with a straight bit installed in the router with the assistance of our miter fence. And that is that detail done. Um, now guys, what I want to do next while we still have most of our block intact 
is I want to do this radius right here on the print. And for that, what I've done is much like I've done on many of the other models and including this one, I have made a template. It is the safest way to do something like this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my template with the end of my piece. I'm going to mark that profile and then we're going to take it over to the belt sander and sand that profile off. There is still enough material here. This is approximately an inch and a quarter thick. There is still plenty of material there to have a solid base for this to sit on the table of the belt sander to get that profile sanded. What I will caution you about is to make sure that your belt is square, because if it's not square uh, to your table, then you're going to have a problem. It's going to sand things all out of whack. So either way, let's get these sanded up and then we can move on. Well, at this point on this piece, we can cut this taper here. And guys, it is just a simple table saw cut. Um, I measured the angle at 36.5 degrees. And what you end up with is two pieces like this. You'll have like, just like we did before, a right and a left. And they're starting to look really good here. So the last thing that we want to do as far as shaping this piece goes is we have this wheel well right here. And guys, once again, uh, don't leave it up to chance or that sort of thing. Make a template. It's not that difficult to do to make templates to mark out your pieces. So we can just line up our template here with our stock and we are going to mark out our wheel well and then we're gonna take it over to the scroll saw and cut this out. Now, if you don't have a scroll saw, of course you can use a band saw. It works just as well. Whatever method you choose, just get it done. Let's get this wheel well cut out and sand it. And then there's a little bit of round over work that needs to be done, guys. And you can see it here around this top edge of our pattern and then down along that tapered edge of each one of our pieces. You just wanna be very careful with that. Um, I'm not even sure if I'm going to use the router to do this edge here. There's not a lot of material there to play with. I'm probably gonna sand that by hand. The rest though, I will do at the router table. So I'll see you guys when that's all cut, said, and done. And there we have our two back, I guess they're like the fender pieces or the engine sides, they call this. Uh, the left and the right. Guys, a very challenging piece, but not impossible. If you just take your time and follow the steps uh, that I've shown you here or that I've explained to you, they really turn out great. Now, I'm gonna be adding some laser embellishments to these, so these won't be glued in place just yet, uh, not until I can get those embellishments put on there. But we are going to turn our attention now, not to this engine part 5A or to this part 5B, because they're very simple pieces. So these really don't need an explanation. Well, the next piece that I want to work on will be this grill piece, that's part 6A. And what I've done is I have cut some oversized stock here. It's actually a little thicker than what this needs to be, and it's a little longer, but it is cut to the right width. I've coated it with masking tape and then applied this pattern here on top. Now, what I've done is I have marked the centers here for these circles, but I have marked them in my case for the center of a three quarter inch diameter Forstner bit, not a 20 millimeter or a 10 millimeter radius. I want them to match the ones that I drilled in the rear fender. If you're doing this with metric uh, measurements, you won't have that mismatch problem. So the first thing I wanna do is take this over to the drill press and drill these through holes here in order to get these radii here cut out. Well, once I got these holes drilled, I took it over to the table saw and I cross cut it to its final dimension of 88 millimeters. At this point, guys, I need to cut these interior cuts. Now there's two ways you can do this here. You can either just cut it at the scroll saw and see how good you are around these corners, 
or you can mark the centers of these holes and drill these ends and then use your scroll saw to cut in between here. Um, barring that, you could always use a straight bit on the router and do stopped cuts and cut this out. But I'm going to be using the drill bit and the scroll saw. I'm going to get these cuts here done and then I'm going to cut out these notches at the scroll saw. And once we get that done, um, we need to shape it and that's going to require a profile on the top. Well, I changed my mind as I didn't have the proper size drill bit for these corners or these ends of the grill. So I actually did the whole thing on the scroll saw. So we can take this out or take this pattern off now and we need to do this top profile. If we look here at the drawing, we can see that the front of this grill has a radius. So this is far too small to be able to, to sand. And you guys have seen me do this before. What I've got is I've got a block of stock here. It's just scrap. I have made sure that this edge is perfectly square and I'm gonna use some double-sided tape and I'm going to attach this to this block to essentially extend it. From there, I'm going to attach the pattern onto the top of our piece. I'll coat it with masking tape first, just to make the removal a little easier. And we're gonna head over to the belt sander and we're going to sand that profile to make it the shape that it needs to be. And after a hand sanding, you end up with this. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that this popped in here perfectly right off the bat. It took some fine tuning. I mean, I had to take a little bit off the top. I had to readjust on my chiseling there because it was a little tight. And even with all of that, it's still not flush here. So that's, I'm not too worried about it. Once this is all glued together, I'll get here with a sanding block and even everything out so that all of the profiles match exactly. So this is all just dry fit right now, and that's all I want. I really don't want this glued together just yet. Like I said, I'm gonna add some laser embellishments to it, have a little bit of fun, and we're going to move on to part 6D. Now guys, this part here is nothing special. I don't think we really need a video of it. We're going to cut the rough stock. We're going to attach the pattern to uh, our stock, cut it at the scroll saw. We're gonna drill this hole first, as I've said, do your holes first while it's still square and everything uh, is able to have a point of square reference to your fences. So we're gonna drill this hole right here. We can see it there, it's a three millimeter and we can get the depth of it right here. It's 13 millimeters deep from this cut line here. Once we get that all done, we're gonna cut this out. We're gonna do the routed edge, which is right here. But as well, this has a rounded profile. Look at that. Once again, we're gonna follow the exact same process here. We're going to attach it to another block of wood. We're gonna sand it over at the belt sander. I'm gonna get this all done. And when this piece is finished, I'll show you what I ended up with. Well, I finished that trim piece and truth be told, I'll be throwing it out and making a new one, uh, which is a real shame because it fits so nicely and so tightly in there. Um, but unfortunately, if we look here, I cut my drilling uh, tolerances a little too tight. It's not quite proper. And when I sand it and shaped, I actually broke through into those uh, three millimeter diameter holes. So this piece is not acceptable to me. It's just got a little bit of a blemish, but it's enough that it would be an eyesore to me. So I'm gonna scrap it and I'm going to remake this piece. So um, I guess that'll be it for that. Um, but with that now we can move on. And unfortunately that's all the time that we have for this week, guys. Uh, we've made some really great progress. Those side engine parts, they are challenging to say the least, but I had a blast doing them. Sometimes it's not about cutting the pieces of wood. Sometimes it's about the problem solving in order to get to cut those pieces of wood. 
Anybody can cut up wood, guys, but to do it safely and to do it so that it looks great like what these pieces do, um, that takes thought and that takes problem solving. And that's what we've done here today. A heck of a lot of problem solving and a heck of a lot of thought went into making those pieces. So as long as you follow along with the process, you should be fine. It's kind of a shame that that front or that back piece, I guess, where the toe hook got kind of ruined, but you know what, I'm gonna make another one and replace it. No harm, no foul. I'd rather take the extra time to make that piece than have to stare at that forever and think, oh man, I wish I remade that, that looks horrible. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I want to thank Dutchie for sending this pattern along. If you guys are interested in this pattern and you want to get a copy for yourself to join along in this build and make your own forklift, or if you want to try one of his other patterns, I'm going to put the link to his site down below so you can check it out. Guys, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click that bell and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. I want to thank you again for tuning in, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the content so far. I hope you're going to look up Dutchie's site and get a set of these plans for yourself and follow along with me and have some fun. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.